It is that time of year again where a lot of us, including myself, like to do the organization and cleaning tasks that we've been putting off for a while. Now, if you're like me, you probably do this more than just the first part of the year. It needs to be revisited probably about once a quarter. I don't have set times. It's just usually when I feel like, okay, I can't take this anymore. I will do some serious organizing, decluttering, cleaning, and today I'm going to tackle the kitchen. Before I get started with this big organizing and cleaning, decluttering of the kitchen, I'm going to share with you a few of my favorite organizing tips in the kitchen. If you follow along, you know that we live in an 1860s farmhouse, so we have a kitchen that doesn't look exactly like a modern day kitchen, but it does function organizationally pretty well by some of the things that we've put into place. So for example, we keep all of our dishes and our glasses in one hutch that is sitting between the dining room portion of the kitchen and the main kitchen area. And I also do keep a lot of my traditional food preparation items in there. I have a little wooden box that I found at an antique shop and that's where I keep my fermenting weights and fermenting lids. I also keep canning rings and lids in one of the hutch drawers. And then on the other side, I have stainless steel straws, which we like to use for smoothies when we use our mason jars for that. For the hutch itself to be a little bit more functional, I have a divider so that I can keep two levels of glasses. So I have big mason jars, like quart size on the top and then pint and half pint on the bottom because they fit in underneath the bottom part of the little shelf. I also have organized my spices up there by using levels as well. For the spices, I created my own spice rack with different levels by using the shelf divider that I used for the mason jars as well as some little wooden boxes that I also found at antique shops turned on their side and flipped over. This just helps so that I can see all of my spices. I've used this system of organizing for over a year now for my spices and I've really enjoyed it. Now since then, I've also moved several spices to the shelf above the stove. It's actually not the shelf, it's just the top part of the stove. This helps for easy access with some of the spices that I use more frequently. Now I have had some people be really worried about the moisture content because there's always steam here around the stove, things like that. I go through these spices quickly enough that I don't really need them to last a long time. So this works just fine for me in this situation. Now you might notice in our kitchen that we don't have any upper cabinets except for the one above the refrigerator. Now above the refrigerator, I keep all of our baking stuff that we don't use very often because it is pretty hard to access. But then the way that we're able to fit in the rest are with some organization containers and things that are a little bit more display worthy. So for example, I have this basket up here this is where I keep a few more spices that I don't have jars for that I use frequently, as well as my lighter because I need a lighter to light my vintage range. And then I also have on the countertop a crock with various kitchen tools. And then things that are pretty, I just actually put on display. So I have my cutting boards on display over here, another one over by my kitchen aid mixer. So things like that I don't actually need to put away because they fit in with the overall vibe of the kitchen. I also have an entire cabinet door devoted to my grain milling section. So I have five gallon buckets with whole grains in it as well as my mill to actually grind them. And so that's really easy to access but it doesn't take up space on the countertops. The goal for me in my kitchen is to keep it very functional by keeping out the things that I use frequently and then using some of the higher cabinet space for things that I don't need to access as often. So for example, in my office cabinets, I have an upper cabinet that houses items that I use for photography. So I have certain casserole dishes and a Dutch oven and a really beautiful pie plate that was made by a potter that I don't use all the time because I wanna keep them really nice for photography. And since I don't do photography every single day for my blog, I keep them in an upper cabinet. Whereas the pots and pans that I use on a daily basis, I keep organized nicely with a pot rack and a lid organizer in the lower section of the hutch. Now last spring, we did a huge overhaul on the pantry in our Victorian farmhouse kitchen that made it so much more functional. I keep several of my most used baking items on display like sugar and einkorn flour, all-purpose flour, oatmeal on the big shelves. And then I also keep things like 
rice and beans in one basket on the next shelf up and I have a whole basket full of dried fruit and nuts. You can get way more details on the pantry and the organization of it. I will leave a link down in the description box below to that whole makeover and all of the details. Another space in our kitchen that we use to keep this room very functional and organized is the office. So we had a nook in our kitchen that had nothing in it and we had cabinets put in. That's where we house the computer, printer paper, printers, all of the camera gear and tripods and all of that that is associated with the business that I run mostly out of this kitchen. And that also needs to be organized today. So that is how we organize our old kitchen and make it still have that Victorian farmhouse charm with the open shelving and the large window and what might appear to be not a whole lot of storage but how we're actually able to house everything pretty easily and in an organized way. Now I'm going to actually reorganize a lot of those things. So a lot of the clips that I showed in the B-roll of the hutch and the in-kitchen office and the pantry were taken at times whenever I was actually revealing those things or doing an organization video. It's been a while since I visited them and I am not a very naturally organized person. Typically instead I just have to every once in a while go in and declutter. So the first place we're going to tackle is the pantry. This pantry might not look too bad when you first look in. We have a few things. I have a water bottle here that needs to get put away. A little icing tube that the kids use to decorate cookies. I'm just gonna toss that, put that where that goes. And then I have some of these jars that I just haven't refilled in a while. This one at one point I switched to powdered sugar because I was actually using this jar for a video and it looked prettier to have it in this container. So I need to put this in another container or a Ziploc bag, label it powdered sugar, and then put regular sugar in here it's supposed to be. I have my einkorn one completely empty only because I just have been too lazy to fill it up. I have the einkorn flour, I just haven't filled it. So we're going to work on that. Now after I tackle this shelf, I'm going to work on these behind me, behind these two doors, they're pretty rough. I have this little printable available, so if you want to do something like this in your pantry, I will leave a link for it down in the description box below. I just am going to make one for powdered sugar because I'm going to add a powdered sugar one because so far I don't have one, but I'd rather it be in this container. This is our problem area, and I honestly still haven't quite figured out what to do about it. The only thing I can really do for the most part is to move things out of this area as much as possible, which is why I have some of this on the shelves. I can get more in my baskets. I have them organized by a few different categories on the second shelf here. And then I'm going to take some of my flour and actually put it in this bottom cabinet because that would just be a good spot to separate out of this cabinet area. These are really deep shelves and that's the problem. You can fit so much stuff, but you can't see it all. And so that's where I end up just, I get groceries, we all shove it in here and then we have an issue where we can't actually find what we have and it takes us way too long. So I'm gonna reorganize it, move as much out as possible and then recategorize as much as I can as well. Okay, 
Honestly, this is one of those moments where I don't even honestly know where to start. <laughs> We're gonna get it though. I'm gonna grab this basket that's up here. I have a this one is dried fruit and nuts. This one is rice and beans. And I put I had a few rice in here, so I put all the rest of the rice and beans in here. And now I'm gonna take this and put all extra things to drink, like Creole brew, teas, coffees. We have a lot of that cluttering up this pantry. random teas up here too. <laughs> this is gonna be nice to have them all in one spot. If you want something hot you can just go into this basket. Some random teas in here. I'm gonna put those in my basket too so then I can use this for something else that I can get out of these shelves. Here we have a basket stuffed with various coffees, uh, teas, Creole brew. I love having everything all collected together like this. Right now, I have coffee still because a couple of my aunts got me coffee for Christmas. I have lots of coffee. So I'm gonna just make sure that all my coffee fits behind this coffee grinder and that'll be the coffee section. I'm gonna get my vacuum out so I can vacuum this area. I have lots of coffee grinds. have this popcorn container here that I can refill to get some popcorn out of my pantry area. Need to pick Theo back up, but I found this random molasses and this random molasses, so we're gonna put those together. So I am feeling considerably better about this. So I got a lot more things out of their packaging that I originally didn't because I have more room on here than I have in my doors behind me. And I find that this just helps me to see what I have, whereas things get shoved in those really deep shelves that I have behind the cabinet doors. So I just made a few more labels and put a few more things out and then I have my larger containers down here of the things that I use a little bit more often. Then these baskets still have, and they're pretty shoved full, but at least I know what's in them. I don't mind that they're shoved full as long as I know what that I can find in there. Because my problem is, of course, losing things that get shoved behind. So this is so much better. Check it out. I have tomato theme here. So I have diced tomatoes, about three deep. This is all pasta sauce back here. I've got two things of ketchup, a couple things of tomato paste, and then just a couple random condiments. This is like the salty section. I have canned salmon and black beans, and then in the back there's some canned tuna, which is in the fish section. I have bought so many more pasta sauces and ketchups and beans and things because I didn't know I had it. This happens to me a lot when I get unorganized. Then I did a sweet section below it. So I have a smoothie additions section. So I have like a protein powder, bee pollen, some collagen. Then of course I have my coffee section. I did have a few more 
chai tea boxes that I couldn't fit in my hot drink basket, so I just labeled this chai tea, and I'm going to leave that out. The sweet section down here has a couple of random things here, like honey and molasses. This is all peanut butter. I honestly didn't know I had that many. There's only three, but still. Coconut milk, and then there's a coconut butter back there. This is all jam, and then pumpkin, and then I have oil, vinegar, wines lined up here. And then I have my banditon baskets. So that's this whole area. It looks a lot better. Oh, I forgot the top shelf. I have my date lady section. I have so many date lady things. A couple syrups here. And then I have a playgroup section because I have people over every Friday, or at least we go somewhere, or we have them at my house. So I have chips and crackers and plastic cutlery, anything in that snack section. And then I have, uh, I always end up having a couple of random sections. So this is a random flowers that I don't use very often section. That's just what we're gonna call it. I have rice flour, coconut flour, spelt flour, and that's that. So this is this area. I finally know exactly what I have. And if I can stay on top of it, I always will. These are pretty cleared off for now. Our milk jars, because we milk every night. We milk into this jar, this funnel, and then a couple of my crock bowls. And then I have a gallon of honey over here. Now this empty section here, I actually just cleared sauerkraut from this area before lunch today. I had some sauerkraut fermenting. So I'm gonna leave this empty as a nice fermenting surface. Next time I have something fermenting, I'll just put it right here. And then I put a few things down in this lower section. I did einkorn products. So I have einkorn flour and pasta, regular pasta, I have a couple of canned soups, and then bread flour, and that's the only groceries I put down here. I just wanted to get as many things as possible out of those two deep cabinets because those are definitely a trouble area. And then the rest of this cabinet is stuff like Instant Pot, Blender, Food Processor, Kettle, those kind of things. I believe I have my blender, yeah. Or no, my waffle iron and my blender up here. And then this cabinet just has egg cartons and plastic bags. It looks really messy, but that is what is in there. Now, I do have additional baking supplies in this top right cabinet. We recently did a cookie baking day over at my sister's for Christmas, and we ended up with a bunch of extra sugar. And so I just put it up there because I didn't really want to keep it in the regular rotation when it's just bulk things that we don't use a whole lot. So that is kept in that top cabinet. I also have granola up there, which we've done forever. Luke and I have a little snack stash up there in that top cabinet. All right now I'm gonna tackle this far cabinet here. It has all of my camera gear and it definitely is looking a bit unorganized. This really isn't too bad actually right now. I forgot I did this somewhat recently, but I'm gonna spruce it up just a touch. I have a few extension cords. I have a bag of extra batteries, a charger that goes with those. I have a remote I've been meaning to try out, have not even opened that yet. I also have new mics for my podcast that I haven't tried out yet. My plan is to start mailing one to my guests that are audio sounds identical. Again, I haven't done that. I have my card reader and extra cards. And then up here, I'm keeping all of my cameras and tripods. This one only fits on its side, it's my mic stand. But I put a lot of these smaller tripods up so that I can see them better. And then I got my lenses, so this little cabinet, although it doesn't look that great, is feeling a lot better for me. All right now I'm gonna tackle my refrigerator. It's definitely been a while since I've thoroughly cleaned it. All right, so I'm going to take out all of these 
side things. Get rid of anything that you get be getting rid of. Like this, for example. Who put this back? I just need to rinse this and keep this jar, but I don't think anybody needs this tiny, tiny portion of apple butter. So I'm gonna do that, combine anything that can be combined, and then scrub down all of these little desserts here. This definitely needs to be clean. pizza and chicken pot pie in the oven so that way I can keep cleaning out the refrigerator. It'll be almost empty. I'm just combining egg cartons because too many in the fridge. I don't know if I can fit all these duck eggs in here. You got duck eggs. Hope they can fit in some of the other extras. The reason we refrigerate our dry erase markers is because we actually, we write on our milk jars each night to label what day they came from. This is looking very, very satisfying. Everything is clean. I know what I have. And I moved these shelves around. I don't know why I always struggled with not having enough vertical space for all of our big milk, broth, and ferment jars, but duh, just move them up. So here we go. Now, the next thing I'm gonna tackle, which I'm not looking forward to, is this top middle section. This has games and we put them back very badly. And so every once in a while, I need to get up there and clean it out. I got rid of several things and reorganized several things. That's what we have left here. Now this top left area is where I keep some photography supplies 
So I'm about to reorganize that area, but the game area is looking quite nice. I also switched out, I had some construction paper up in the game area and I decided instead to put it in this paper area, which makes a lot more sense. Also, it's more accessible. I'm really not sure if that's a good thing because I think the kids might get into it more, but also it never got used up top at all. All right, the last thing I'm gonna organize during this organizing session is the spice cabinet. So I organized it here on my YouTube channel. I shared all about the jars and the labels and all that kind of stuff. But like everything that I do, it needs refreshing and it needs retouching every once in a while. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is take inventory and make a little list of some of the spices that I need to replenish. And then I have some up here that I've just piled in that I haven't actually transferred to jars. So we're gonna revisit all of that. don't fit into the jars into this basket. This is what I typically do, but then they end up accumulating in my cabinet. Now I'm going to need a few more spice jars. I think I'm gonna order a few more of these because I have a few spices that since I first organized that I've gotten that I enjoy that I don't have any spice jars for. So I'm gonna do that, but for the meantime, I'm just gonna put them in here. That way I can only have my nice jars on display here and behind the stove. All right, well, I'm feeling a lot better about this kitchen, pantry, dining room, in kitchen, office. We have a lot going on in this space. So many things, so much life happens in here. I probably spend 90% of my waking hours in this room, if not more. And so I'm feeling better about it right now. This is the command center of the home that needs to be revisited pretty darn often. January seemed like the perfect time to do it. I hope that you and your family had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and that you're able to get some things organized and I hope that I've motivated you to do some of that. If you're brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like if you enjoy organizing videos like this. I make two new videos every week on Food From Scratch, Natural Living in a Handmade Home. And as always, thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse. Mm -hmm.